when you say I can't afford it, you are basically sending a broke AF signal to your brain. Your brain does not know if you can't afford it right now or you will never be able to afford it. Your brain literally can't tell the difference. Your brain can't tell the difference between I can't afford right now or I don't want to afford it. Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage Podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. Hello everyone, this is Cherry Tung from cherrytung.co and today we will talk about why I can't afford it is no longer allowed in my world. And here I'm not just talking about my own program, which, you know, some people do um, use to say that in the past, like I can't afford it for my program, but here I'm not just talking about my program. I'm also talking about just anything that you're thinking about buying. And the reason why I can't afford it is no longer allowed in my world, is no longer allowed on, you know, my social media or, you know, what people say to me is because of these following reasons. In my opinion, when someone says I can't afford it is because you either don't want it bad enough, it is not your priority right now, or you want the other person, like you want the seller to make it cheaper, or you just don't currently have the money for it. And that's completely fine. But there's a difference between saying I can't afford it right now, or I'll figure out a way to afford it. There's a difference between that and just saying I can't afford it. Right? When you say I can't afford it, you are basically sending a broke AF signal to your brain. Your brain does not know if you can't afford it right now, or you will never be able to afford it. Your brain literally can't tell the difference. Your brain can't tell the difference between I can't afford right now, or I don't want to afford it. Because what you are saying to your brain when you say I can't afford it is basically sending a signal to your brain of I can't. I cannot do. This is my limitation. I'm unable to do that. I don't have the power to change things. That is what you're setting up to your brain. And I know a really common thing for some people is that they like to say, I can't afford it if they don't even want that thing, right? Like, let's say someone wants to sell them, I don't know, let's say someone wants to sell them a bath bomb, right? <laughs> and it's not that they can't afford a $5 bath bomb, but it's because they just don't want to hurt the other person's feelings, or maybe they just can't think of a good enough excuse to say, I don't want it. So they just say, I can't afford it. But that is totally not true. It's not that you can't afford a $5 bath bomb, it's because you don't want it. And so this is also about boundary setting and being okay with rejecting people. I think a lot of us are people pleasers. A lot of us are afraid of hurting other people's feelings. And instead of just saying, you know, downright, I don't want that, I don't want to buy what you're selling, people fall back on, I can't afford it, but that's actually bad for them because that's sending a signal to your brain saying that you don't have the ability to afford something, which is not the case. If you don't want it, it's because you don't want it. It's not that you can't afford it. And another really common reason that I see people use the word I can't afford it is because they want the other person to give them a discount. I see that, you know, time and time again, they want to play this like I want to call this like manipulation game. A lot of people play a manipulation game and they're like, oh, if I can, you know, just make my make my situation seem more miserable, um, maybe guilt the other person into giving me a discount, then I can save a couple of dollars here and there. The thing is, by doing this, you're basically giving up your control. It is like giving up your own power to be in control. This is very similar to the mindset of very common. If I get a raise, I'll be happy. If I get a promotion, I'll be happy. If I get a sale, I'd be happy. If I get a discount, I'll be happy. But what are you really telling your brain when you say these things? What are you really telling your brain? You are basically giving up your power to provide happiness for yourself. You are allowing other people, you're allowing other people's actions to dictate your happiness level. Does that sound empowering to you? And I'm not saying this from the perspective of, oh, I am better than this and I've never done this in my life. Not true. I've done my fair share of giving up my own power and letting other people dictate my happiness level. I have done all of the above. I've you know, said to myself that if I get the promotion, I'd be happy. If I get uh, a raise, I'll be happy. If I get a discount, I'll be happy. If I get a sale, I'd be happy. 
I've done that before. And, and I've tried to, you know, just let other people control my happiness level. And when I'm unhappy, I blame it on other people. And I'm like, oh, it's because my boss didn't give me a promotion. My boss didn't give me a raise. Or it's because my prospect didn't buy my product or service. It's because, you know, XYZ person didn't do what I expected them to do. And I blame my own lack of happiness on the external situation, on other people. But essentially what I'm doing is giving up my own power to provide happiness for myself. Because you know what? We can't control what other people do. We cannot control, you know, our boss into giving us a promotion. Like whether our boss gives us a promotion, that's up to the boss, right? Whether our prospect buys from us, that's up to them. This is out of our control. We can try our best to provide value. We can try our best to um, perform really well, but we still can't control that outcome. And by depending your happiness on that outcome, you're basically giving up your control. And so that is why the whole like I can't afford it is banned from my world. The reason why I ban it is because it just doesn't have any good outcomes. You literally like you either use it as an excuse, which a lot of people do. It's not that they don't want it or it's not that they can't afford it. It's because they don't want it. Then just say it if you don't want it. Don't say you can't afford it if you just don't want it. Like I can say I don't want it to. I don't know, like some perfume, let's say someone trying to sell perfume. And instead of saying I can't afford like a $70 perfume, I can just say I don't want it. And that's totally fine. You don't have to make it your fault for not wanting things like it, it's not your fault for not wanting what they're selling. It's not your fault. You can just say you don't want it. And another side effect of saying I don't I can't afford it is basically not giving yourself that power to control your happiness. You're you're basically letting other people dictate whether you'll be happy, which is also another side effect. And of course, there's also the it's not your priority right now, which is totally fine. Not everything has to be your, your priority right now. Like, for example, you can really want to book this trip to Paris, right? You can really book this trip to Paris. You can really want to book this trip to Paris, but it might not be your priority right now. Maybe your priority right now is to really focus on your personal development. Maybe your priority right now is really to um, put money towards your education, right? towards your gym membership, let's say. And it's totally okay. That is not your priority right now. It doesn't mean you can't afford it because you can't afford it. It's basically like giving yourself a death sentence and saying that, oh, I just don't have the ability to afford a trip to Paris, which is not true. It is just not your priority right now. You do have the money, but you just choose to spend it in other ways. And that's totally fine. But you don't want to brainwash yourself into thinking that you don't have the ability to afford something just because it is not your priority right now. And another thing is, if you don't currently have enough for it, then make it specific. Don't say, I can't afford it. Just say, I am working on saving up for it, right? You, you want to really focus your energy on talking about the positives. You don't want to, you know, keep brainwashing yourself into, I just have a lack of ability to do this thing, or I just have a lack. You know, you don't want to always focus on the lack. You want to focus on what are you doing to make it happen? A very empowering phrase that I hear is instead of saying I can't afford it, which a lot of us say I can't afford it, instead of saying that, say how can I afford it? If this is something that you really want, then how can I afford it? There are many times in my life when I look at beautiful things and I really love beautiful things. There are many times when I look at beautiful things and um, I don't, I didn't have the amount in my bank account or in my credit card or whatever during that time, in my pocket during that time. But instead of saying I can't afford it, I ask myself, how can I afford it? And you can see this is like a very subtle switch, a, a very subtle change, but it really changes everything because you're not giving yourself a death sentence. You're not summarizing your situation and you're not limiting yourself. You are using this desire to buy this thing that maybe right now you don't have the money for. You're using this desire to, to do better, to improve yourself, to make more money. And this is what, in my opinion, this is what like life is all about. It's about finding things here and there to better yourself. Um, maybe it's maybe it's like a really healthy relationship and you see how your partner is consistently improving him or herself. And you're like, Hey, my partner is, you know, doing so much 
in, in the field of personal development, I also want to work on myself. I also want to become a better version of myself. If you see your friends, let's say they're uh, working out a lot and it's a positive influence and you're also like, I also want to work out. I also want to get into a better shape. If you see beautiful things that maybe you don't have the money for right now, but you want to get them, then instead of saying, I can't afford it, you say, how can I afford it? How can I make it happen? Right. And, and you can see how this turned from a very limiting thought to a very productive, a very empowering thought instead of just basically boxing yourself and giving yourself a limit, giving yourself a ceiling. You are now opening more doors and windows and you are now creating more opportunities for yourself. You are saying that I have the ability to make this happen. It's just a matter of time. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode, tagging me at cherrytung.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.